Welcome to this presentation on the recent mandatory changes in evaluation. In order to be as efficient as possible, the duration of each slide is quite fast. Please feel free to pause the clip at any time when needed. As of July 2011, the scales of competency levels, also known as les échelles de niveau de compétence, will be optional. The new evaluation framework and the progression of learning will be mandatory. In this presentation, we will take a closer look at these two documents. The evaluation framework provides mandatory guidelines for the evaluation of learning. The document is also known as Le Cadre d'Evaluation. The document covers all levels from secondary 1 to 5 and both core and enriched programs. The framework presents the subject specific competencies. In ESL, there is no change. The weighting of the competencies, still no change here for us. The wording of the competencies for the report card, again, no change for English here. The evaluation criteria that must be used for report cards, the evaluation criteria that must be used only to support learning, and explanations for each criteria. The evaluation criteria were revised and they were made more uniform across levels. They are now the same for all levels. Let's take a look at a page from the framework. Here you have competency 1. You'll notice at the top the weighting of the competency. On the right, the revised criteria. And on the left, a new criterion, proficiency of subject-specific knowledge, which is basically the knowledge or les connaissances. The most important change in evaluation is the fact that we must now evaluate the knowledge. You'll also notice at the bottom of the page the double-sided arrow. The arrow's role is to tell us that we have to go back and forth between the knowledge and the competency. Our evaluation should not be all about the knowledge. You have to strike a balance between the knowledge and the competency. This paragraph is taken from the framework. It tells us that evaluation must take place at all steps of the learning. At one end of the continuum, we have knowledge-based evaluation, for example, a verb test. At the other end of the continuum, we have competency-based evaluation, for example, evaluating student while interacting orally to see if the student can communicate. The star at the end of some criteria. The star means that this element has to be evaluated but for formative feedback purposes only. For example, the use of strategies should not be evaluated to determine the student's marks, but simply to help them improve their abilities. Now, competency 2. It's basically the same thing. You have the knowledge on the left, the weighting at the top, and the revised criteria to your right. Once again, the same for competency 3. In this comparison between the program and the framework, you'll notice that the changes are really minimal. The comparison is for cycle one core. Once again, this time for enriched cycle one. And the last comparison for cycle two. We have just seen a new criterion related to knowledge. Will the MALS exams be different? Will there be more knowledge in the MALS exam? The answer is no. But we were told by the MALS evaluation team that the knowledge will be evaluated through the competencies, so they will be evaluated in action. The knowledge will be made more explicit in the rubrics.
what exactly is this knowledge that we're talking about? The knowledge is detailed in the progression of learning. It is divided into five parts. Culture, language repertoire, strategies, processes, and text. To be able to read the progression of learning, you need to understand its legend. The arrow means that students are constructing their knowledge with teacher guidance. They are learning. The star means that the student is able to apply the knowledge by the end of the school year. The shaded area means that the student is reinvesting the knowledge. Here's a section from the progression of learning. The knowledge is listed on the left and the levels are on the right hand side. Here you have a section taken from functional language. On the right you have all levels from primary to secondary five. For example, 14A asks for permission. Students should be able to ask for permission by the end of grade six. This is why we have an E in the first column. Students should then be able to reinvest this knowledge at the secondary level. The examples at the bottom, may I, can I, do you mind if, is it all right if, students should not be able to use all of these, but at least one, in order to be able to ask for permission. Now at 14b, gives or refuses permission. By the end of secondary one, students should be able to apply this knowledge. So they should be able to give or to refuse permission. And then from secondary two to five, they should be able to reinvest this knowledge. But it should be acquired by the end of secondary one. Let's take a look at another example. 15a gives advice and feedback. Students learn how to give advice and feedback throughout secondary one and two. They should be able to apply this knowledge at the end of secondary three, where we have a star and then reinvest this knowledge in secondary four and five. It's the end of this quick overview of the changes in evaluation. We have just taken a look at the evaluation framework and the progression of learning hoping they are now a bit clearer to you. Thank you.